ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. This is the Friday afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video for September the 5th, Friday afternoon. We talk about extreme weather here. We get down to nitty-gritty details we don't have time to talk about on television. And eyes are going to be on the tropics in coming days. But then again, this is early September. What do you expect? Let's begin with some Skycam images around the ABC 3340 Skycam. And uh, on the Alabama Gulf Coast, pretty decent day. Quite a different picture compared to what we saw down there on uh, Monday. The sky mostly sunny. A lot of folks enjoying the uh, weekend after the Labor Day weekend. You know, it's a good time to go down there. It's still warm. The rates are lower. Uh, just a, a great time. In fact, October is my favorite month on the Gulf Coast. Up to the north, there's our Coleman Sky Cam. That looks like a summer afternoon, a field of cumulus clouds in the sky. And over on the eastern side of the state, not much happening there. The sky mostly sunny. Very few buildups over there. Uh, there's a look at the water vapor satellite imagery. Gustav long gone, a fading memory. That thing is up over eastern Canada. A little shear axis extending south from that uh, and also involved with Hannah is over Alabama. And again, underneath that, we've got a few showers, as you can see on the radar, at uh, 148 this afternoon. Scattered showers are generally west of Interstate 65 uh, from near Muscle Shoals and Moulton down to uh, Haleyville and Utah and York and Livingston down in Sumter County. And so looking at that, you sure get the idea most of the high school football stadiums will not have rain tonight. Uh, down closer to Hanna, the tropical storm, there's a look at the Jacksonville radar. They're catching the outer bands of Hanna, but the bigger rains are still offshore. Really a better look at it coming from the uh, Charleston radar. Looks like that uh, first really good feeder band about to come on shore in South Carolina. And uh, Hanna will be causing some pretty good rains up and down the eastern seaboard. There's the QPF chart for the next five days. That's suggesting rains of anywhere from five to eight inches from the upper part of the North uh, South Carolina coast all the way to the coast of Maine, and some good rains out there across the heartland and in South Florida, 6.9 inches. That's the suggestion, and of course, that's with Hurricane Ike early next week, so a lot of things happening. Around here, it's got us getting a half inch of rain. I don't know if we can get that much over the next five days. Our weather looks pretty tranquil here. Well, there's the uh, tropical scene. One, two, three. We've got three on the board today. Hannah approaching the coast of the Carolinas, a tropical storm. Ike, a hurricane north of the Leeward Islands. And Josephine, uh, that's off in the eastern Atlantic. Let's take a look at Hannah first. That's the closest one in. Convection and organization has actually been increasing this morning. And that's on the verge of becoming a hurricane. Uh, top sustained winds are now at 70 miles per hour, moving north at 20. No change in the track. Uh, if anything, it maybe it's adjusted a bit to the left. Uh, but you know, remember, remember, this is more than likely going to be a tropical storm. You don't want to really look at the center line. You've got tropical storm force winds that extend out a pretty long way. So windy and wet from the coast of South Carolina all the way up to uh, the New England coast over the weekend. All of that stays east of Alabama. This is the real big topic of discussion today. This is Ike. Looks like it's out there around uh, 64 west. The uh, outflow is restricted on the north and western side, and we've definitely got some shearing going on there. Uh, the, the storm not as strong or as well organized as it was at this time yesterday, but still it's a major hurricane. Yep, models shifting a little to the left now. And many of the models want to bring it down to the Florida Keys before that north turn begins. I still believe it will not make it past 85 west. In fact, uh, I really think it's going to make the turn and come right up through the Florida Peninsula early next week, not even getting close to Alabama. Of course, when people see that, they start getting the creeps, thinking this might be a Mobile Bay-type storm. I really don't think that's going to happen. The odds of that are tiny, but having said that, you never know. There's the track from the Hurricane Center. They have adjusted to the uh, left with the models. They now bring the hurricane through the Florida Keys uh, during the day Tuesday and move it up for early Wednesday morning just to off the coast near Fort Myers. And again, uh, there's a chance this thing could come up and uh, be a problem like Charlie came in a few years ago down around Punta Gorda. Let's look at some of the other models. Uh, this is the wharf, and uh, it is inland. Uh, next week. This is valid at uh, midday Wednesday of next week. And it's inland over Florida, moving due north. And based on the wharf, it never makes it past 82 west. 
That's the extent of the westward progression. In 82 West is east of Tampa Bay. Uh, this is suggesting the thing comes up through the Keys and then bends up coming in around Punta Gorda, again, right around where Charlie came in. Is a very, very powerful hurricane. And the GFDL is very, very similar. This is the uh, GFDL. Uh, and uh, middle of next week, it's got the thing uh, down there just to the uh, southwest of Fort Myers, moving due north at that point. And uh, that would suggest it doesn't make it past 83 west. I don't see a, really one model that moves it past 85 west. And you'll see in the GFS in a minute, there's a really nice trough that's going to come along and pick this thing up. I, I, I can say with reasonable confidence this is not going to be a Mobile Bay or a New Orleans storm. Uh, reasonable confidence. No guarantees in this business. We all know that. But uh, the question is, where does the north turn begin? And the, I think the main question is, this going to affect Tampa Bay or Fort Myers? Or will it affect Miami or uh, Melbourne directly? We'll see. Uh, and quickly, Josephine, uh, it looks pretty ill. You can see the low-level swirl with no convection around 35 west and uh, 15 to 16 north. The convection is displaced, so it's really having a hard time. Uh, the sustained winds 45, if that much. Uh, uh, modeling moves it generally to the northwest, and so does the official Hurricane Center track. And a lot of times they get up in there, they'll recurve. And also keep in mind there's going to be some upwelling from Ike, so more than likely this will not be a major player. But as always, we'll watch it. Let's go through the GFS. This is the 12Z run, valid at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Nice trough over the nation's heartland. Down below tomorrow at midday, we've got Hannah that is inland on the GFS uh, over the uh, southern part of Virginia on the way north. Alabama with a little moisture, but you know what? The GFS has overdone the moisture field for the past two days. We'll mention a small chance of a shower, probably nothing beyond that. Uh, Sunday, we're dry. Hannah moves up in the Canadian Maritimes. Ike comes along toward the Bahamas in uh, the GFS doesn't show it developed. It, it might weaken some, but I don't think it'll be that weak. Uh, Monday, Ike approaches South Florida. We stay dry. Got a cold front to the north. Tuesday, the front comes through here with very limited moisture. I don't know if it rains much, if any, at all Tuesday. And according to the GFS, at midday Tuesday, Ike is very close to Miami. And then Wednesday, it just kind of sits there over South Florida, maybe uh, hanging around Fort Myers. On the Florida West Coast, we stay dry. Thursday, the northward turn begins. Coming up right toward Orlando. And then uh, on the 12th, Friday the 12th, a week from today, look at the trough. Very, very sharp, well-defined trough coming through, and that's going to pull that thing northeast. And sure enough, in fact, the, the GFS moves Hannah, or, uh, Ike almost due east, coming back into the Atlantic. And on the 13th, it kicks out to sea. Uh, we get a cooler and drier air mass settling in here. So uh, I honestly believe Ike will not be a problem past 85 west or for areas west of 85 west. Uh, and I'm not so sure it makes it that far west. The turn is going to happen, we believe, probably over the Florida Peninsula. And at the end of the cycle on the 21st, uh, i got a little Vortmax here, but the main westerlies are up north. And as we always say, we're just peeking out there looking for anything interesting that's it for the weather extreme video today we'll have notes on our blog that's alabamawx.com if you're watching this on youtube or itunes many of you do uh over the weekend brian peters will have the video updates my next one will be monday morning at seven but again stay up on the uh, blog for the latest and if you are happening to be in north central alabama we invite you to watch us on television this evening abc 3340 the news at five six and ten again thanks for watching have a wonderful weekend and god bless